Robert Persig, the author of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. In this week's program, we'll be looking at spiritual cult classics. So far in this series, I've been defining cult books in terms of two things. The first is their theme, sex and social taboos, war and urban violence, drugs and mind expansion. But the second common factor is their expression of a deep human need to explore one's individuality, to attach to one's own microscopic existence some larger significance. That's what links the likes of Henry Miller and Jack Kerouac, Aldous Huxley and Jean-Paul Sartre, Michael Hare, Ken Kesey, and Robert Persig. Cult books like these aren't simply books with a fanatical constituency. They're about a search for meaning, and that search may become an exploration of the mind itself, or leap into metaphysics, like some of this week's cult classics. You see things vacationing on a motorcycle in a way that is completely different from any other. In a car, you're always in a compartment, and because you're used to it, you don't realize that through that car window, everything you see is just more TV. You're a passive observer, and it is all moving by you boringly in a frame. On a cycle, the frame is gone. You're completely in contact with it all. You're in the scene, not just watching it anymore, and the sense of presence is overwhelming. ZMM, as Robert Percy calls it, is claimed to be the biggest selling book about philosophy ever. On one level, it's an account of a motorcycle journey which a man takes with his 11-year-old son across America. And much of its appeal is as a road novel. But ZMM is also a stunning psychological detective story and a far-reaching attempt to reconcile the worldviews of West and East, matter versus spirit, reason versus mysticism. Many Americans were stationed in Japan just after World War II in the Army of Occupation. I was in Korea at the time, and we were tremendously impressed by what we saw. We had grown up in the 1930s depression period of America where the old farm ethos was dominant. Uh, you got a job, and you worked hard, and you retired, and uh, that was your life. And suddenly we were, we were thrust in the middle of, of this unknown orient where things were so vibrant with, for reasons that we couldn't understand. This was something I had to know more about, you know. Something is going on here that, that my language is not covering. People would come back from, from furlough in Japan and they would just be dreamy for about two weeks. You couldn't get a, a, any work out of them at all. They're just going, oh, Japan, Japan, <laughs> Japan. <laughs> and, and we were seeing something that, that we knew was important. Out of this grew in San Francisco the old beatnik movement of the early 50s. And out of that grew the hippie movement and this whole attempt to reform America. For Persig, the unifying principle of Eastern and Western thought resides in what he describes as quality, or the good. The real cycle you're working on is a cycle called yourself, he writes in ZMM. The machine that appears to be out there and the person that appears to be in here are not separate things at all. They grow towards quality or fall away from quality together. Persig's pursuit of the grail of quality began when he was working as an English teacher, inspired by a colleague. She was the one who put the bee in my bonnet uh, on quality. I had never thought of it before. And she just said, I hope you're teaching quality. And I said, oh, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, who isn't teaching quality? She said, oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> then she keeps coming back, driving further and further. So finally, I have to face the question, what the hell is she talking about? Quality. And that's the beginning of the metaphysics of quality at that point. For Persig, the question of what is quality became an obsession. He was convinced that quality contained some dynamic element that was the mainspring of creativity and the key to the mystic's heightened awareness. Ordinary thinking and all the manifestations of conventional human life resist this dynamism. We need to be sparked into a direct apprehension of life as it truly is. Quality is the Buddha. Such an assertion, if true, provides a rational basis for a unification of three areas of human experience which are now disunified, religion, art, and science. Art is high-quality endeavor. Art is the Godhead as revealed in the works of man. In the area of religion, one can meditate on the fact that the old English roots for the Buddha and quality, God and good, appear to be identical. 
It's in the area of science that I want to focus attention in the immediate future, for this is the area that most badly needs the relationship established. The dictum that science and its offspring, technology, are value-free, that is, quality-free, has got to go. The particular institution that Persig chose to attack was the Department of Philosophy of the University of Chicago. He lost the fight, and also his mind. He was diagnosed as schizophrenic and incarcerated in a mental hospital for three years. I was condemned by a court of law, signed by a judge, uh, gone through a complete legal system. said, this person is insane. And I noticed with Senator Note on the side, subject to lobotomy. Because the American Civil Liberties Union had protested my, my placement in the hospital, the judge had overruled them. So I was just escaped with my life, you see, from those hospitals. When Percy came out of hospital, he had enormous difficulty because of his medical history in finding a job. But at last he did find work as a technical writer. I wanted to go back to flying, which I'd learned, but they grounded me for life because of the mental illness. And suddenly it occurred to me a motorcycle is just about as good as an airplane. In fact, better because it costs less, it's less dangerous, and you see more. So I went into that and then met my old friend who I hadn't seen in years, John Sutherland. We went riding together. And he said, and he was re recalling a book called Zen and the Art of Archery. At the time he was talking about his engine was running and black smoke was coming out. And I thought to myself, he doesn't need a book on Zen and the Art of Archery. He needs a book on Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And the title just captivated me. And at that time, all I ever had was a title. It's very strange to hear an author starting a book with the title. But that's exactly what happened in this case. So I thought I would write a little article, kind of a whimsical, tongue-in-cheek article about Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance and how attitude is important and what you do. And as it grew, um, it became, oh, a three- or four-page article. And then I began to see that the subject of quality fit into it very strongly. Quality was the essence of motorcycle maintenance. So I started to expand on that. Then as the summer came on, uh, John and I and Sylvia had planned a trip west, and we went all the way as described in the book, and then from there down into south along California 1 until we got to Los Angeles. And there he visited an old friend of mine in Hollywood, and at his house overlooking a Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood came the idea to incorporate this essay into a narrative about the trip we'd just taken. See, Hollywood is a place where they get ideas. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's something very ironic that this book should have originated in Hollywood. 